now we have talked about the etiology of congenital hypothyroidism let us talk about the clinical features now the interesting thing to know about clinical features of congenital hypothyroidism that most of these babies are asymptomatic at birth in fact nelson says that many children even if they had complete agenesis of thyroid they will still do not have symptoms at birth the reason for that is very simple the thyroxine hormone can cross the placenta so when the fetus is in utero mother provided the mother is not hypothyroid the mother's thyroxine will be transferred to the baby and that thyroxine will be sufficient to allow the fetal development of the baby so you will find that they are asymptomatic at birth they have normal weight and normal length if you do in a completely a genetic part a genesis of thyroid gland if you check for t4 levels at the time of birth they will be about 33% of the normal despite there being no functioning thyroid tissue this much amount of tissue this much amount of thyroxine is good enough for a fetus but as age will advance now the mother is unable to give any more thyroxine to the baby and so the sign and symptoms will start appearing you will find that there will be first of all early signs there are two important early signs that you need to know the first early sign is there is a wide open anterior and posterior fontanelles usually posterior fontanelle is either closed at birth or it closes soon after birth the posterior fontanelle size is even if it is open at birth it is about 0.5 cm or less than that in these children the posterior fontanelle can be larger than 0.5 cm and anterior fontanelle it can be widely open than normal so wide open anterior or posterior fontanelle are one of the early clues along with you will find that some children will have head size to be slightly increased it will not be sufficient enough to cause macrocephaly but it will be on the higher side somewhere in the range of about between plus 1 and plus 2 standard deviation children who have increased head size when you do imaging you may find that there is some mixed edema of the brain tissue which will be present the second important early sign is the one on which super speciality one liner has been asked in aims entrance exam in bracket you would write mcq prolongation of clinical jaundice clinical jaundice in term babies usually tends to improve the physiological jaundice tends to improve by about 2 weeks if jaundice persists beyond 2 weeks in term and beyond 3 weeks in preterm we call it as prolonged jaundice one of the reasons for prolongation of jaundice is congenital hypothyroidism thyroxine is required for the maturation of conjugation uh, ability of liver if that is not there there will be prolonged unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia in the patient so presence of these two signs are considered to be early markers they both will appear in the first 15 to 20 days so they are the features which are considered to be the early signs if you have to choose one the earliest sign but often missed are the wide open anterior and posterior fontanelles as age advances the other signs will now start to appear the other signs will include sluggish activity by the child he will be lethargic there will be poor feeding and choking spells will occur during feeding there will be constipation in the child hypothermia will be there there will be skin mottling of the peripheries there will be macroglossia large size tongue will be present this is important visual can be asked on this this large tongue can produce apneic episodes there will be noisy breathing and nasal obstruction can be produced and along with that there will be cardiovascular changes like bradycardia some children if when you do chest x ray you can find cardiomegaly in them edema of the genitalia will be there there will be umbilical hernia because the tone of the anterior abdominal muscle will be decreased some children have generalized hypotonia as well and macrocytic anemia is also found to be present in these individuals so in umbilical hernia you can put a line one point and add some may be associated with generalized hypotonia also moving further about 10% will have congenital anomalies no specific pattern has been seen but it is found that cardiovascular system is the most commonly affected organ system where congenital anomalies are seen a significant number of them also are found to have thyroglossal duct persistence so abnormal persistence of the thyroglossal duct can be seen in some individuals 
as age progresses and the disease remains undetected or untreated particularly beyond the 3 to 4 months of age you will find features like now other features like stunted growth short limbs will appear there will be persistence of open fontanelles there will be delayed dentition hypertelorism with flat nasal bridge mixed edema will occur particularly in the skin of the eyelids there is back of the hands and the external genitalia there will be coarse brittle scanty hair with low posterior hairline nelson says when these children try to you know do like this prominent wrinkles will be seen on their low posterior hairline also their scalp is also found to be thickened so you can write they also have a thickened scalp this posterior hairline shows extensive wrinkles then there is a dry scaly skin with short and broad hands generalized pallor will be seen with keratinemia it can impart a sallow you know pale yellowish white kind of appearance to the skin of these children developmental delay will be common initially motor delay will be seen if the condition remains undetected intellectual dysfunction features will also start to appear hoarseness of voice particularly when the child cries uh, that is a prominent feature so if i have to show you a photograph look at this child this was a child who was diagnosed with uh, congenital hypothyroidism this child is having some of the features like there is a large tongue which is present and there is a flat nasal bridge as well upper part of the nasal bridge is also flat once i was discussing this one of the students said sir the child is uh, lethargic also i said i asked why sir child is uh, sleepy lethargy does not mean sleepy lethargy means abnormally sleepy or difficult to wake so looking at a photograph you will not say a person is lethargic or not so if i am sitting with my eyes closed i may be sleeping i may be thinking or i may be you know just comatose or unconscious so that cannot be known through a image by itself this is the second photograph of a child can you see there is a sallowish yellowish complexion of this child there is a flat nasal bridge there is increased gap between the eyes there is a open mouth although the tongue is not as big that it is protruding there is a pot belly and there is also umbilical hernia present in this child so these are the features that you find in patients of congenital hypothyroidism